nice to meet you guys. Hello and welcome to Grizzly and Bear Overland Cape York series with Lee and Steffi. Previously, we just completed the old telegraph track. We took a barge to cross the Jardine River. This is the only way to access the tip of Australia. We stayed in a caravan park at Loyalty Beach campsite, not far from the main town of Bamaga. As you may know, we've lost the top of our raised air intake. Oh, Maybe we found a temporary solution. So I'm gonna use this. If you're from the military, you might know this is a Fred. Freaking ridiculous eating device. This is a gift from my friend Carol. So it's a spoon, but it's also a can opener. Is it a freaking ridiculous or something else? Freaking. Ah, yeah. I thought it was another word. This uh, diameter is too small, but this one should be good. So I'm gonna open it. Yeah. Ah, it's made for it. Now we just need some duct tape and a drill to perforate the, the back, make the a big yeah, we'll hole at make... the back. Alrighty. It's 4am. We've got a mission. We want to watch the sunrise from the most northern point of the Australian mainland. Let's go. Wow. It's 6am and we are officially the very first people to the most northern point of Australia on this day. <laughs> it's a big moment. This is quite a special moment, I have to say, to be here with my beautiful wifey down there at the most northern point of Australia, of the mainland, I should say, in our vehicle that we've driven around the world. It's been in some pretty iconic locations over the years, and this being one of them. We're going to chill out, watch a magnificent sunrise, and enjoy this very, very special moment. Today we decided to cross back on the ferry. We didn't spend as long on the north side of the Jardine as what we originally planned, but in the end you can't do everything. It's starting to heat up a little bit now and it was magnificent up there, absolutely beautiful. But in all honesty, unless you're into fishing, <laughs> there's not a whole heap to do. We're not ones for sort of just relaxing on a beach. You can't swim because of the crocodiles. So we made the decision today to cross back to the south side of the Jardine River, probably head towards the west coast and the town of Weeper today. On our way, we were concerned about some massive bushfires, but we later learned that they were controlled burns. We didn't make it all the way to Weeper that day. We stopped at Bramwell Roadhouse, where we've met an amazing lady. Tanya. Yeah, Lulu and I are going to have a good time today. I'm not quite sure where we're going. We'll work it out when I get to the intersection. <laughs> See ya! See ya! More on Tanya and Lulu later. Just passing now. Thank you very much. Weeper. Way out on the west coast of Cape York. We're actually on the Gulf of Carpentaria right now, right there. 
we've always claimed to be overlanders, not off-roaders, and we've done a hell of a lot of off-road in this last couple of weeks. Yeah. So we've pushed it hard and had a whole heap of fun. But yeah, it's time to, to get back on the bitumen for a little while, I think. We stopped at the glass repair place because we had two major ship on the windscreen and with this corrugation, you don't want them to spread. We spent the night at the busy Weeper Caravan Park, where they charge $40 for an unpowered site, probably a little overpriced. We left the town of Weeper behind. We only spent a night there, went in for a little bit of maintenance. We decided to make a move south. So we have uh, continued on our way on very good roads, I must say, all the way from Weeper to Archer River. And we're now at a free campsite. We've got the Bry on the go and Steffi on the picnic blanket reading her book. We're gonna chill out here tonight and then we are going to head in a very uh, unplanned route towards Cooktown sort of area. We met a lovely gentleman at the Archer River Roadhouse today, Greg. He advised us on a really cool route to take, so we're gonna give that a go. On the menu tonight, meat on the braai and instant mashed sweet potato. Bon appétit! The following day, as per recommended by Greg, we took the Port Street Road, then headed south through the stunning Lama Lama and Lakefield National Parks. There she was chewing on a bone. Wow, these are wild cows out here. We were fascinated by the amount of termite mounds. Inside the mount is an extensive system of tunnels and conduits that serves as ventilation system for the underground nest. The Amiterms meridionalis, commonly known as magnetic or compass termite mounds, are created tall, thin, wedge-shaped and usually oriented north-south. on Lama Lama traditional land and we just came across a friendly reminder that there is no swimming around here. We usually always check the water depth before a river crossing but this time we want we just take a chance. Ah, you can see it. Now we've just stopped on the side of the road. This track has just been incredible. I think it's an Aboriginal run, um, possibly a station. Yeah, it's just been magnificent. A lot of crocodile warnings and we've just pulled up for lunch. It's pretty special and there's a sign. You're not allowed to camp in any of these areas but it is allowed to, uh, to be here for day use. So yeah, good spot for lunch. This beautiful road was passing through several stations. So we had few gates to open and close behind us.
We're here. And we're going here. There's no internet out here. But we found a number to ring. And we managed to book a campsite for the night. Technology. Okay, so your booking has been confirmed and an email has been sent containing your booking number, your permit and additional information relating to your booking. This was our camp for the night at the old Laura Homestead campground. And by chance, the next morning we bumped into Tanya again. Morning visit from an absolute legend that we keep crossing paths with. That was Tanya from New Zealand. Steffi's got some new inspiration now. Tanya is 56 years old. She is in peak condition. She is living life. She is loving life, cruising around solo female traveler in that magnificent defender named Lulu. And uh, yeah, we're buzzing. 7.30 in the morning, she come in like a, like a tornado. She's so full of energy and yeah, just an absolute legend of a, of a lady. She did the old telly track on her own. She's an amazing lady. From Old Laura, we're heading to Rhodes Cooktown. The Lion Den Hotel. Iconic Lion's Den Hotel. We're calling it. This is the finale, the end of our Cape York adventure. The weather has just turned atrocious. We were going to do the Bloomfield, but literally visibility is non-existent. We've got this forecast for the next three to four days. We've got wind warnings. It's, it's turned horrible, so we are going to cut our losses, say we've had an incredible yes. trip. Final lunch in Cape York at the Lion's Den Hotel is a fitting way to uh, say farewell, au revoir, to Cape York. So we're going to go in, we're going to grab a feed, have a look around, um, and then we're going to take the main road straight back to Mount Carbine and awaiting Grizzly. <laughs> This is a great place to celebrate a successful Cheers to Cape York or unsuccessful Cape York trip. And over the past decades, people have been leaving all kind of souvenirs there. And so did we. Yeah. Where are you gonna put it? I've got to find somewhere. Yeah, that's the tough bit, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> And this marks the end of our Cape York series. We hope you enjoyed it. We see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye bye.